Moving up the ranks of the First Order, here's your look at the new Gentle Giants Star Wars, the First Order Stormtrooper Officer 1-6 scale mini bust. The First Order's infantry units wear stark white armor derived from that worn by the Republic's clone troopers and the Empire's stormtroopers. Members of the new generation of stormtroopers are trained from birth, growing up with unit designations instead of names, and fed a steady diet of First Order propaganda to ensure absolute loyalty. Where the Empire opted for numbing routine, the First Order's training simulations and live fire drills encourage improvisation on the battlefield, making these stormtroopers more dangerous than their Imperial predecessors. Designed, modeled, and prototyped using top-of-the-line 3D technology, this 1-6 scale mini-bust represents the next of their new collection of ongoing Star Wars saga. Each mini-bust is hand-cast, hand-painted, and hand-numbered with a limited-edition certificate of authenticity. Before we get this review underway of the First Order Officer Mini Bust, the first thing we're going to want to do is figure out how tall it actually stands. Obviously, you can see that it has no lower half. It's just the bust that we're dealing with here. So it's going to be a little bit shorter of a measurement. While I'm doing this, I'd like to thank the folks over at Diamond Select that provided the sample of the First Order Officer that we could have a look at in this review. As for how tall it actually stands, the mini bust of the officer is six and a half or 6.5 inches in height. We can switch that over to centimeters, revealing that the officer mini bust is 16.6, .6, again, about 16 and a half centimeters tall. Just a couple of things we can have a look at first. To come included with the officer bust, you get yourself a sheet of instructions. I say just a sheet because there's actually nothing printed on the other side. It just shows you how to swap out the arms because there's two different configurations. We'll look at more in a second. And basically just to show you as well that you will want to remove the head first before removing the arm with the shoulder piece. Again, we'll talk more about that in a second. Also, we can address coming included with the bust is you get yourself a product catalog. You know how I am when it comes to product catalogs. I love looking at these things. Inside, quickly, just looking at the things, the contents of the, of it, you can look at the one side, and there's several different busts, some of which we actually have looked at on this channel before. That Mandalorian is a really nice piece. I really would eventually like to get that Luke Skywalker as well. Some premium collection statues, and legends in three dimensions also really like that line as well. So you get that included. I was like looking at those. To also come included with the officer, you get yourself a trading card slash certificate of authenticity. While the front may look like just a standard trading card featuring the First Order Stormtrooper Officer 1-6 scale mini bust, it's not until you flip the card around that you're treated to the number of the limited number release. I want to also stress the fact the First Order Stormtrooper Officer is of a very limited 500 copies worldwide. The one that I have just happens to be 270 of that 500. Once again, the First Order Stormtrooper officer blown to bits. Don't be alarmed, this is the way it comes out of the styrofoam tray when you remove the contents from the box. And again, because it does have some configurable components, specifically two different sets of arms, it means then you can customize your Stormtrooper officer exactly the way that you want. Before we start assembling this guy, let's actually look at the base itself, which happens to make up also the torso piece that's going to have all the arms attached. All of the arms, by the way, will be attached via magnets, via strong magnets on both sides, and a magnet rooted in the top of the neck there as well. The base is pretty simple, carrying on at least the black coloring, and it does then, as a result of it, make the belt pop, I feel, a little bit more as well. Paint, for the most part, is generally very clean here. These are, again, all hand-painted. So somebody would have taken the time with, I'm guessing, a very small paintbrush and painted in all the details on the officer. A few little areas on the back, for example, a little bit of an extra black is past its point. But other than that, I mean, paint is pretty good on this. We can flip the statue upside down, and underneath we're treated to Gentle Giant Limited, Star Wars First Order Stormtrooper Officer 1-6 scale mini bust. 
If you have a good memory, you'll remember as well that this was a 270 number out of the 500 limited release. Again, I want to stress, these are limited to only 500 copies worldwide. A couple of also rubberized feet are attached to the underside of the base, not only to prevent the scratching on what surface you decide to put the statue down on, but it also prevents scratching on this. And this is the most important thing you will want to keep still intact, is that number that they've written in next to the 500. Keeping in mind, again, this lifts it just enough off the surface. Because again, if you are moving this back and forth on whatever tabletop or shelf space, there's a potential that that could start rubbing off that 270, at least in the case that I have here. You really don't want that rubbing off, especially if down the road you decide you want to part ways with this. Any collector who would be wanting to pick this up from you will want the certificate of authenticity and that matching number still intact underneath the base. Okay, so let's start getting going with a little bit of assembly now on the First Order Stormtrooper Officer. At the very beginning of this review, I had him sporting in his hand the F-11D blaster rifle. This one happens to come with the black shoulder pad. I will want to say, though, when it comes to assembly of this, in both cases, whether you use this arm or the other arm that we're going to be looking at, you will want to put this on first, simply just because this part is going to be going around the neck piece. And obviously, if the head is in place, it's going to be a bit of an obstruction to it. The detailing done to the F-11D blaster rifle actually looks quite good. This really now marks the second First Order minibus that we had a look at. We also had a look at the First Order Stormtrooper, which didn't actually have this shoulder piece, although the blasters and the hands were about the same. The detailing on this is really quite good. Even the little small details featured on the very end of the rifle, you can see has been painted very meticulously in there as well. I'm guessing this probably was a label or perhaps like a decal. On the outer side, you can see there's a light there, a little yellow daubed on the end. And again, we see it from the back. Some nice silver added in there as well. Very clean, very nicely painted. Again, all hand-painted pieces. Now, this one does sport the shoulder pad piece, and it's only on the one side of the Stormtrooper officer. Um, again, when you are putting this in place, just keep in mind that you will want to put this in first, like that. Then from there, you can go ahead and pick up the head, which we can have a look at. It's really not that much different from the Stormtrooper Guard. Really, the difference between the two busts is more so like this arm. And it's more so this shoulder pad piece. Everything else pretty much has stayed the same. It's got some, again, some nice detailing done to the helmet here. Primarily all that white with that duck bill. Uh, I was con continue to compliment. compliment. It's not so much a compliment. I really don't like the design of the First Order Stormtroopers. They look like duck bills. But I will say to the credit, certainly, of Gentle Giant and Diamond Select, it has been a nicely painted looking helmet. As you can see also on the inside, there's the magnet. So we're gonna go ahead and attach that. And the way that we've attached it already, you can cer certainly see why adding the head as a second piece is certainly the most crucial element of it when it comes to assembly. You really don't wanna be sliding this underneath the helmet and certainly taking this off could be definitely devastating when it comes to this piece breaking off or at least scuffing it because that's pretty close to the helmet. Then, of course, to finish off the look, he comes with two hands. Now, one of the hands is actually just a straight fist. I guess technically you could put it on like that, but it looks a little bit strange that he's resting then the blaster rifle against his forearm. It just doesn't make much sense. So instead, what you will want to do in this case, remove this arm and correctively get the correct arm and fit that just in place like that. And you'll see underneath, he'll hold the undercarriage there of the blaster rifle. So that's one way to display the statue. The honest fact is though, is because I already have the Stormtrooper guard, the regular First Order Stormtrooper displayed with the F-11D. I'm probably not gonna display this one with this. And instead, I think I'm gonna depart over and display it instead with the other arm not only because it's going to have the different gun, the SE-44C blaster pistol, but also for the fact that it does have the red shoulder pad piece, which definitely brings a lot more color when it comes to displaying the statue. Blasting the First Order Stormtrooper officer to bits again. Boy, they just can't cut a break. Let's now get a closer look at the alternate arm, and my favorite of the two. This one does have, like I said, some much needed red that's brought to the shoulder pad piece. It's not simply just the one coat of red. In fact, they've darkened an area around it and that makes it look super crisp. 
The arm is just bent in this instance, although I guess you could say really the other arm was bent as well, but this one is definitely displaying a different firepower, a different gun in hand. This is the SE-44C blaster pistol. A little bit smaller, a little easier, I suppose, for them to carry around and wield. But again, because I already have the First Order Stormtrooper Guard with the other gun in hand, and because this one does have the bright red going for it, this is going to be the way I'm going to display the bust. Again, it works the exact same way. You've got the magnet on the inside of the top shoulder piece. And then that first slides in, making sure, of course, that goes in first, just like that. And then we can go ahead and revisit the head again, which we've already had a look at. Take that, put that on top like that. And then we're going to go ahead and take the other arm. Now, now, really, you could use both arms, although the other arm looks like he's either escorting in prisoners, which I guess would still work, or it also looks like this one's asking for change. I don't think you can really tip a First Order Stormtrooper officer. I think it's more a trap than anything else. But if you wanted to, I guess you could really add that arm. And it works. It works a lot, certainly better than the other arm configuration where using the fist arm just doesn't really work. But I guess you could display it like that if you wanted to. But for me, I'm going to pop this one off. Very, very strong magnets, I might say, as well. And we'll go ahead and just pop that in place like that. And again, really, either look works fine, especially when it comes to this arm and this specific blaster in hand. Let's go ahead and pick this one up now and get a closer look at the statue. At least its top half, its lower half, is completely absent here. But again, has very nice bright white paint applied. The black certainly dividing the areas of the armor, for example, have very been cleanly applied. And again, I really want to stress the fact that these are all hand-painted pieces. Doing a quick spin around. I know we already looked really at the back of the torso, but again, just one last look so you guys can see it. And again, you can see how how close that shoulder pad piece is to the underside of the helmet. Really don't want to move this back and forth without taking the helmet off first. While admittingly, I will, I will say the F-11D blaster rifle does look better in hand, just simply because the other bust that we have reviewed on this channel not too long ago, I already have that one displayed with the F-11D. So I, in, I think instead I'm going to be more inclined to display the officer with this gun in hand. And again, I think the benefit of going with this route is, again, you bring in a lot of much-needed color with that red shoulder pad piece located at least on one side of the Stormtrooper officer's body. So here in the final looks of the Star Wars First Order Stormtrooper Officer 1-6 scale minibus, that's a bit of a mouthful, you can see that I've decided to display this. This is probably the way I'm going to display it on the shelf, just because, again, I love the bright coloring of that shoulder pad piece. You know, though, while I am looking at this bus spinning around here on my turntable, I'm still debating whether I will change out this arm. I like the fact that the other arm is straight and does have the close fist, but you know, I might just end up displaying him after all with the open hand, because I just think that that makes some sense. He's escorting maybe in the prisoners into the room, and it makes a little bit more sense. It doesn't make sense at all when you have it displayed with the other arm, but at least with this configuration, you have, I think, two choices to display on the other side of the bust. It's got some bright colors, very clean for the most part applied. And again, you really have to keep in mind as well that these are hand-painted pieces. They're not factory printed, so there are going to be some little issues here and there. And especially when you have it on against the backdrop of the white, some of the black will stand a little bit more, especially when it comes to the imperfections. They're very few and far between. The only few that I really pointed out was really the back, that little canister that's located on the belt area. It has a little bit of the messier black, but all the rest of it, very cleanly applied paint. What do you guys think of the First Order Stormtrooper Officer now marking the second of the First Order Stormtroopers that we looked at on this channel? The other one being just a regular Stormtrooper we looked at not too long ago. And again, there really isn't that much different from one to the other. So again, having it with the introduction of the shoulder pad is a nice touch. And being able to display it with either a black shoulder pad or a red shoulder pad is certainly a nice touch. I love the fact that you do have the option to configure these pieces and have them exactly the way you want them on display. A big thank you again to the folks over at Diamond Select that provide the sample of the Star Wars First Order Stormtrooper Officer 1-6 scale mini bust. <sighs> Bit of a mouthful that we had a look at on this channel. Let me know what you think of it down below in the comments section. And if you are also new to this channel, enjoying all the content you're seeing, be sure to hit that subscribe button down below and turn the bell notification on. And that, yes, make sure you're coming back to this channel on a regular basis. 
because not only are we going to be looking at some more Star Wars statues, but we're also going to be looking at some more Diamond Select pieces as well. So as always, thanks for watching. See you guys next time.